This is the Dan K Show. You're watching. We've got elite and premier hockey to talk. We're talking get to know Universal. We're talking about the first ever elite Midwest game with the crush crushing the competition. And we're talking all things premier and elite today on the most watched show in junior hockey. I'm Dan K, rocking all my salt life gear. Last little bit of Florida getting soaked up before we head up to Boston this weekend. Lucas Jones will introduce him in a minute on the Dan K Show. What's going on, Dan K Show fans? This season, the Dan K Show, the most watched show in junior hockey here Thursday nights, is all for you premier and elite athletes nationwide. For those of you in NCDC land, you can go watch NCDC this week on YouTube.com right now. You can also find it on Spotify and iTunes, that audio version available each Wednesday morning after the original airing Tuesday night. The man who gets that done for us, who puts these things on the air, who edits things together, and who right now on my computer screen has a little mouse right up his right nostril, and it made me chuckle internally for a moment. My right-hand man, my consigliere, mon frere from another mayor, Lucas Jones. Welcome in. We are just a few days away from the Junior Bruins shootout. How are we feeling? We're feeling good. We're feeling ready. We've got our schedule for the Junior Bruins shootout it's going to be a good one. We are going to get to see some live hockey. We're going to be on the broadcast. They'll be our first games broadcast of the 23-24 season. Up until now, we've been taking phone calls, dodging phone calls, on more Zoom meetings than we can count. Like every other coach, Dan, we just want to get right back into hockey. Yeah, and like every other coach, we are excited to talk about hockey right now. And today's show starts with history being made. We always love firsts here on the Dan K Show. Your first date, your first love, your first corn dog. You know, all very important things in the growth model that is human life. I, and we look at the first elite Midwest game, Metro Jets Elite taking on the Chicago Crush, and the Crush grabbed the first dub in Midwest Elite history. 34-18, to 18, they shot outshot Metro in Game 1. They win 4-1. They did drop Game 2 with a back-to-back, but what a performance from these two sides, Lucas. How exciting is it to have elite hockey spreading west? It's really cool, right? Any any chance you get to kind of expand the footprint and, and make more opportunities available to more skaters, that's always a win in my book, right? We want as many people playing hockey as possible so they get to enjoy the game we all love. And I, I love that we got to see some elite Midwest hockey. Kind of feels a little right that it went with a split, right? We we were kind of kind of waiting to see what this division would bring, this Midwest elite. But based on based on the outcome of the first two, it's exciting stuff. Yeah, and one of the best names in hockey is playing net in that first win, getting the first win in crush elite history, in Midwest elite history. Johnny Augusta, 17 stops on 18 shots face, only rivaled by names like Jimmy Sawgrass or (laughs) Tommy Pebble Beach. You know, those are some of the names out there. Maybe Timmy Torrey Pines. Like, there's not many names out there as good as Johnny Augusta. Johnny Augusta sounds like a guy who's rocking the shades indoors, stopping pucks, Cool, calm, collected. And I'll tell you what, he was just that against this Metro side. Will Saldano with two assists in his first game. And the big number, two goals for Ryan Brown. What can Brown do for you? The old UPS slogan. Well, guess what Ryan Brown can do for you? He can score you a game-winning goal and add another to the docket to get that first ever win. He's an ultimate team card member. You can go check those out at the underscore Dan K show. Lucas, the elite As a whole, we get the Elite Midwest underway. More games to come this weekend around the country right now. What are some of the storylines you're seeing from this past week of Elite Hockey? Well, we're we're seeing a couple of teams kind of jump out and make their mark early, right? We pull up the stats here, and Dan, one thing, uh, I'm going to save the Southeast analysis because that's kind of our, our split into Premier, but I'm looking at Florida, not too far from the Southeast, And I'm seeing the Tampa Bay Juniors jumping out 2-0 to start the season. And the Bold City Battalion, a new team in the Florida division, starting off 2-1. They're not afraid. Both of those teams, Dan, not shying away from the offensive end. 12 goals and 15 goals, respectively. Those are some pretty good numbers to start off. Yeah, and how about 
let's go north a bit. Let's go to uh, Dan K. Show, what is lifestyle correspondent and uh, summer fun and enjoyment liaison and salmon shorts purchaser <laughs> for all Dan K. Show members, Todd Wagenbach. Wags has got a bit of a wagon on his hand yet again in Rockets Hockey Club land. This guy's got Jace Lombardo leading the league in goals four with seven on the season. Then he's got the leading point total man in John Crowdell, who's got four points per game right now. Five goals, seven assists for him, 12 total points. This Rockets Hockey Club team can normally score the puck. They're scoring it more than ever this year. Yeah, they've they've adopted this. I mean, they've always had this this kind of go for broke mentality, right? That's what the Rockets Hockey Club does. And it, it kind of works in all levels of the game. But starting off the season with what is it, 19 goals in three games, that is an impressive way to start. That's how you start with a statement. We are here to score goals. Good luck trying to stop us. Yeah, and good luck trying to stop anybody in Rockets Hockey Club land right now. They are absolutely tearing it up. We talk about some other guys right now. Another Ultimate Team member. How about the Bold City Battalion getting their first ever elite win and leading the way? The Anthony K Show. This young man with a seven-point weekend. K might be the real deal here, and I'm not talking about myself. Well, I mean, it's you talk about statements, right? And we talked about it on the NCDC show as well. This These first weekends here are really a chance to make a name for yourself as an organization, but even as a player, this is a good chance for you to to stand out, to really make your mark, to embed kind of this idea of you as, as being one of the top guys in the mind of your coach. So if you can get out there, have a really good performance in these first few weeks, it really sets the tone. Yeah, and before we get into the Southeast Division and talk about that a little bit, Springfield, a good start, 1-0, uh, a good-looking team there up in Massachusetts. But Lucas, next week, next Thursday, for these elite fans watching at home, it's something pretty big. It's the first power rankings of the season. The Dan K Show's monthly power rankings start next Thursday. The first week of each month, you'll get the top 10 teams in the elite and the top 20 in the premier ranked right here on the Dan K Show. Lucas, a team that might be involved in those rankings, the Potomac Patriots. And how about Taras Korchenko? Three goals on the season, all three of them game winners so far for the year 2006. I mean, no big deal, right? You you kind of have to shake your head in amazement because you've got an 06 getting out there, not just firing home goals, but game winning goals, right? So he's getting mixed up in some pretty important moments in the game. Kid's got ice time. He's obviously got a, a great shot on him. That's going to be somebody you're going to want to watch out for, mostly so he doesn't keep scoring game-winning goals against you. Yeah, and, and you look at Luke Vega with two on the year. You look at another guy with two game-winning goals this season already, Kevin Rossello, the young man from Newport, Ritchie, Florida. It's about 10 minutes away from the Dan K. Show Studios down here in Florida. Great area to live, great area to be. Rossello and Vega have been game-winning savants. You look at the power play goal leader, none other than John Crodell with three of his own. Aiden Paisano, Robert Poliski, and Tyler Tanucci, each with two power play goals. Pisano from the picks, Tanucci from the rush, and defenseman Robert Poliski with the Metro Elite Squad. The special teams looking strong early on. Always the last thing to kind of come on. Biggest goaltending story doesn't have a card yet because I'm telling these Carolina folks right now, Lucas, I'm doing it live on the air. Carolina Junior Canes, you guys are off to a hot start in the ice. I need you to get me a picture of Anthony Trantis now on the <laughs> website because I've been trying to make this young man an ultimate team card for two weeks, and I don't want to put up an empty headshot, and I haven't been in Carolina yet to take his picture myself. Three games played, Lucas, but he's got two wins, two shutouts. He's got a shutout in both of his starts, and this guy's going incognito right now on me. I need this guy to have a picture on the website now so I can post him. Yeah, and this is a good time to take a quick break and just remind all our teams that if you don't have headshots for your players, it makes it really hard for us to promote them. And that's kind of our thing. Our thing is to promote players. So get those headshots updated. And yeah, this Carolina team really, really doing a good job here. I mean, you look at the elite, they're five and one. 
You look at the Premier, they're five and one. So you've got as an elite and premier organization, quick maths here, starting the season at 10 and two. That is a huge momentum boost in a really tough Southeast division at both levels. Could the junior Canes put together another incredible season? We'll have to see. Again, you look at Dylan Gorman. He's got one starting year in a shutout. Shane McCone of the Springfield picks 29 saves in a shutout performance. Chase Avier from the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Knights, 33 stops in a shutout win over Elmira. He was an ultimate team member this past week because he had a headshot. Nicholas Grasso, half goal allowed per game. That's a half a goal. That means, I think, Lucas, that someone's chopping the puck in half on the ice and only getting half by him, right? That's that's how that works? I mean, that is that is legal with the updated rules. Yes, you can do that. Okay, so as long as you have a you have a sharp enough blade, you can chop the puck in half. You look at this this squad though, 974 to Zachary Robert from the Metro squad. Nick Kremitzer, he's got a 967 for the Charlotte Rush. Jackson Bernier with a strong start to the season. 88 saves already for the Atlanta Mad Hatters Netminder, a one and one start, 967 uh, saves percentage there. Nate Haas, a familiar face of the Florida Eels, 2 0 to start the year already, a 1 5 goals against, a 959 saves percentage. I want everyone at home to have a glimpse into my mind right now. Multiple times I nearly said ERA instead of goals against. <laughs> the summer has still not been shaken out of me. Minor league baseball coverage has still not been shaken out of Dan K. We are going to get back into hockey mind, though. And we're going to do that talking premier hockey. We just talked a little bit about the Southeast and the success of the Carolina Junior Canes and the Elite. We're going to do that same talk now about the premier as the Carolina Showcase is closing upon us. It's just two weeks away here. We've got to talk Carolina Junior Canes, premier hockey, and a ton more from the USPHL premier after this quick break. This ad spot could be for you. Promote your team, organization, business, product, or cause with The Dan K Show. Contact us, www.dankshow.com. Use that contact page or reach out to us on socials at the underscore Dan K Show. We'll match you with a sponsorship plan that best fits your needs. Welcome back, hockey fans. It's time to talk premier hockey, and we have had premier performances nationwide specifically in the Southeast, Lucas. We start with the Carolina Junior Canes at 5-1-0 to start the year in first place, trailed closely behind by the Charlotte Rush and Potomac Patriots. All three of those teams, just two losses combined, only one of those in regulation. How good is the Southeast Division yet again this year? I mean, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, yeah, the Southeast is pretty good. They're looking pretty sharp. And, and I think the biggest thing for them that we've seen historically is that you sometimes talk about how oh, the first couple of games don't matter. You always make it up on the back end. In the Southeast, that's not really the case. The first couple of games will sometimes decide who really has that, you know, that half that half game lead, maybe, or that one game lead as we head into the final week of the season. It creates a lot of drama for us, especially as we get into January, February. But I think for the Southeast, it it keeps them in a state of constant panic. It feels like they never quite know where those standings are going to shake out. But for those three teams, for Carolina, Charlotte, and Potomac, the first couple of weeks have been very successful. Yeah, and you look at a team who moved from the Southeast, Lucas. How about the Nashville Spartans starting 6-0 and in their new division in the Great Lakes? They've got a matchup with Toledo this weekend at home in Nashville. I want to I want to put us both on the spot here. We didn't talk about this beforehand. I want picks. What do we think? <laughs> Is Nashville the real deal? Do they take it to Toledo at home? In the Music City, or does Toledo drive down to Tennessee, as we call it, the Sunshine State, and get a big time W? What happens, Lucas? Toledo and Nashville, let me hear your thoughts. Well, I, I do want to say first for the Nashville fans, we're we're working on something. We're working on something, potentially, maybe a little trip from the boys, but we're working on it. We'll keep you fans no, in the loop. It, it is going to happen. It'll be in November. Don't tell anyone. November, don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, as far as this game, man, I am so excited to watch this. This is this is going to be a sit down, start to finish game here. I I think I'm going to go with Toledo. I like it. Okay. I think the only reason I'm going with Toledo, it's not the offense, it's not the defense, it's not the the history of the team, it's not anything like that. I'm looking at penalty minutes. 
Toledo this year has and two games less for sure, but half the amount of penalty minutes that Nashville has. I think Toledo can potentially use that to their advantage. I know that that Toledo power play is an effective power play. And I will say this for Nashville, if they can keep themselves out of the box, they're going to be dangerous. If they get stuck in the penalty box a little bit against Toledo, then you might run into some trouble. I think I'm picking Toledo. I'm going to call it a split here. I think both of these teams are stellar. I've talked about both of these teams all season long, all, all leading into this year. I've been excited to see what's going to happen at the top of this Great Lakes division between Nashville, Toledo, and Metro. I think this is a great add for the Great Lakes. I think bringing Buffalo in to add another team was great too. You have a six-team division in the Great Lakes now. I watch out for Nashville. I do not fall asleep on Nashville at any point. I think you look at a guy like Ronan Keenan in that locker room, an absolute beautician who's going to use his size in front of the net when needed. The boys are buzzing right now in Nashville. I think it's. I think they're seven and one after this weekend, and Toledo's four and one. Wouldn't be surprised if one of these games goes to OT. I think it's going to be a good battle the whole way through. I'm excited to watch it. Let's kind of keep rolling down here, going through some hot starts. One storyline: the Elmira Impact, Lucas, led by Philip Tomachek, who you know goes out there, has a huge game, wins the star of the game, and gets Elmira their first premier level win against Wilkes-Barre. That's a great one for them. You go to Motor City. Motor City sweeps Battle Creek to start the season off. They're 2-0. And and MJDP's 1-0 to start their season off. And then how about the boys from Quebec? Gatineau Universel. Uh, c'est incroyable. The performance, they are 2 and un to start the year. Uh, this is a team that, you know, they are tough to deal with. And uh, they are very difficult to stop. Accent aside, uh, <laughs> you're correct. Do you want me to go back to my baton room? Would no, you like def- it? definitely. Is this a little better? That. As we say, as we say in beautiful Quebec, watch out for gators and laissez le bon temps rouler. That is what we say in Quebec every single day. <laughs> Uh, people in Quebec, you can certainly fact check us on that. In fact, I encourage you to fact check on that. Um, yeah, no, I, you you like to see that the inclusion of these new teams and and for folks who might be uh, you know a little bit a little bit confused at, at some new teams, there are teams that are going to be playing in the elite and, and playing in the the premier in the New England. You'll see them a lot of showcases, and again, it's just a, a, another way to kind of increase the visibility of a lot of different players and and you know, provide some some challenges for some teams that are uh, more traditionally and have had many, many years in the USPHL. So it's going to be fun this year. Getting to know, get to know, along hey! with all their friends. Hey, I've had I mean, that one working at, for a while, I'll be honest. You look at Gabrielle Lehoulier, who had five points on the weekend. Tristan Poor, three goals, one assist, four points in a 2-1 weekend against the South Shore Kings. Nathan Pelletier, with a three goal weekend. You've got Bauer Genest with three assists on the season already. Mathis Tarani, Leo Adams. You, you talk about when you go in net here, Lucas, with this Gatineau side, they've got some good depth between the pipes. All three guys get a start this weekend. Simon Thibault with the shutout in nine sa- 19 saves in a shutout performance. Marcus Gomes with a, with a 9.62 saves percentage in his first start, 26 shots faced, up 25 of them. Jean-Christophe Delorier, he got he got the one loss, but, I mean, this guy saw 52 shots in his start. So this is going to be a fun team to watch this year. I'm interested to see how they kind of mix in and mold with this premier product. And, Lucas, another team that's mixing in pretty well to start the season, how about the Vegas Thunderbirds? How about them Thunderbirds? And I've got some news for the folks at home. You Jets fans out there, Man, I have a bit of schadenfreude watching you guys have to suffer through this season. <laughs> Love seeing it as a Giants fan. But you Jets fans, I can tell you one quarterback who's not going to be playing for you because he's on the blue line for the Vegas Thunderbirds. That's Matty Ryan. Matty Ice playing blue line for Vegas. But this team, Lucas, 3-0, hot start. Yeah, I mean, Matt Ryan, he he really can do it all, right? From being a, an incredible uh, defender for the Las Vegas Thunderbirds to being a a quarterback. Um but this Matt Ryan certainly doing a lot better at his position, making things happen for Vegas. And, you know, you love to see a hot start from this team. The Thunderbirds last year, they were so much fun to watch, right? They they really ran up through their the Pacific Division. They they were part of a Pacific Division that was incredibly competitive all season long and very much so they in their regional them. playoffs. 
could call them the fun birds. Oh boy. I guess I had that coming a little bit, didn't I? I already introduced Go. I introduced the whimsy into the show, so this is really my fault. It's 100%. Once you you unleash the beast, don't yeah. don't expect them not to bite, okay? That's that's <laughs> what I always say. People tell me to stop biting, but I say you know, you unleash the beast. <laughs> this is what it's all about. Lucas, let's keep going to Florida. Eels, Tampa Bay, right back on top where they've been. Yep. And you know how this division's worked in past years. Every single point matters. The Junior Blades got themselves out of it early on in the season. They had to battle back. They drop one to the Bold City Battalion. You start 1-1-1, one, one, and one, building the picket fence out there with the regulation win, the regulation loss, and the OT loss. They've got three points. Atlanta off to a slow start as well as Palm Beach. The Eels and Tampa Bay Juniors are back on the mountaintop again. What is it going to take to knock these two down? Well, it's going to take two things, I think. It's going to take consistently good defensive output, right? If you get into a shootout with these two teams, it's really tough to maintain that that level, that speed, that level, that consistency, and frankly, the output. So you're going to have to be good defensively. I think the second thing, too, is you've got to keep your eyes on the prize. What I mean by that is you got to make it to the playoffs and you want to make it to nationals. What does that mean? It means sometimes trying to get that extra overtime point, right? It means looking at, at instead of games, looking at series and trying to come away with a certain amount of points per series. It's boring to think of hockey sometimes like that. But when you're in a division like Florida, sometimes that can be the difference between being in and being out. Yeah, and then you look at a division like the Northwest right now, the only team not to kick things off, the Vernal Oilers, out there in dinosaur land. That's um, that's Utah's dinosaur land, Vernal Oilers, home country there. But the Seattle Totems and Casper Roughnecks off to a good start. Two and one for each of those squads with four points. Bellingham and Rogue Valley both got two points at least out of the weekend. Bellingham getting three. Rogue Valley with two. And it, it was some tight-knit hockey out there. You look at it, they played three games each of those squads. Four and three is the goal differential. One to the good side, one to the bad side, depending on what side of those series you were on. Hard-fought hockey. A good story I like to see, Lucas, early on in the year. How about the Dells Ducks knocking off the Moose in the second game of that two-game set? I love, uh, This is a Dells Ducks team that has championships in their past, right? And they are trying to relight that fire, bring back that, that, that energy, to the Wisconsin Dells, which is a great place to live, great place to go vacation. Now a great place to play hockey for the Ducks, quack, quack. Yeah, I mean, we we always talk about, right, Potomac's journey as an organization, right, to where they are now. And so it feels right to talk about, you know, the, the Ducks off to a good start. You're right, Dan. When we we covered that some of that championship run, I predicted that championship way back then. And, it you know, it'd be good to see the Ducks kicking things off here, taking down a perennial divisional powerhouse in the moose to start the season yeah and that was a year where nearly my flyers back then the philadelphia flyers junior hockey team led by joe young in that nearly won a championship the same year that the dells won with jared young in net. it would have been the year of forever young <laughs> that is uh, what is it, 16 candles is that where forever young's from i i didn't i've never seen 16 candles I so i wouldn't know Forever young. What a song. What a song. Don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> I truly have nothing. I haven't seen I haven't seen the, the movie. I don't know who sings the song. I got nothing for you. Well, I just sung it. You heard me do it. That's it for this week, folks. Let's get to the empty net, the final portion of each and every week's show where we talk to you, the fan. Now that the NCDC this week is underway on Tuesdays. Now that the Dan K show is underway on Thursdays, it is up to you, the fans, to reach out to us. And Lucas, how can they do that? It's super easy. So There's a easy. bunch of ways. It's so easy. You can do carrier it on, pigeon. Smoke on signal. Carrier pigeon would work. A smoke signal, I guess, if you could get it high enough. Facebook, you can comment. You can message us there. We get those messages. You can do right. it on X, formerly Twitter, at the underscore Dan K show. You can do it on Instagram. You can DM us at the underscore Dan K show. You can go to www.dankshow.com, use the contact form and let us know how things are going. If you've got our emails or phone numbers, sure. Text us, email us, give us a call. Why not? If you've already got the number, go ahead and use it. You can, you can go on TikTok. You can TikTok it at us. You can start a Reddit thread with our names in it 
begin a conversation and we will eventually potentially stumble upon it. You could stumble upon Adams. <laughs> you can go to stumble upon. That is a former thing. You could Pinterest mm-hmm. your favorite things and then send us a screenshot of your Pinterest. And Actually, talk about I'm going to say, please don't make Pinterest's about the Dan K show referencing the Dan K show. That is, is a that? crossover that we just, we don't want to get into. Pinterest, Make a Pinterest are weird. shopping list. Make a wedding registry. Send it to us at the Dan K show. Maybe I'll buy you a gift. Maybe. Whatever you do, we want to interact with you. We want to give the best coverage to all of our players, our families, our coaches, our pl- everybody around the country. We want to get you seen by scouts and coaches at the next level. We want to help you move through this great game of hockey in the best way possible. We are here for you. Players first. Always the mantra with the Dan K show. Lucas! Your parting words, good sir. That's all he's got. He doesn't have anything else. What else do you need from him? Get off his back. He doesn't need to give you anything. He doesn't have to say something just for you to feel good. Hey, I got my parting words for this week. It's been a while since we've done an audio podcast, and I've got some great parting words. And they come from, you know, where I found them. Sometimes it's not the person who makes the, the quote. It's the person you hear it from, and it really sticks. How about Theo Vaughn? Nothing changes if nothing changes. And that's what we need to remember in life sometimes, that nothing changes if nothing changes. If we want to get better on the ice, we have to change the things we're doing that are causing us to not be the player we want to be. If we want to get better in the classroom, we have to figure out what we are missing, make that change, make ourselves better each and every day, and get those A pluses in class, get that GPA to that 4.0 and get ourselves on the best college on the planet or wherever we're going after a junior hockey career. Nothing changes if nothing changes, and we're never changing for you folks at all. We're just here to cover hockey and help all of you be seen by Scouts Nationwide when Dan Kane's on the mic. It's always Hockey Night.